Jesus said there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree, all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the earth. Be alert at all times praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The days are surely coming when our Lord will return and justice and righteousness will come with him. Bless us in our waiting. Keep us alert this Advent season. Together, we wait and we watch. Our prayer for the lighting of the first candle of the Advent wreath is an echo of our texts from today. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill my promise In those days, at that time, I will cause a shoot to spring from the branch of Jesse, and all will be saved. The prophet Jeremiah spoke these words in the midst of the destruction of Jerusalem and the first temple back in 586 BCE. A word of promise and hope in the midst of what felt like the end of the world. There's a further echo of this in the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel that we will be journeying with over the next year. Here, too, the setting Jesus talks about is not too pleasant. He speaks of a time when the powers of heaven itself will be shaken, when there is distress among the nations, when people will have their breath taken away by what they see and experience. But his instructions to the faithful in that time are to stand up, to raise up their heads. They're to be on guard, to get their full attention, to be watchful for the signs of the promised return. They're not to give in to the numbing of their minds, bodies, and spirits, or to be taken over by the cares and anxieties of this life. Rather, they are to be alert at all times and to pray. They are to wait and watch. Now, I don't know if you've picked this up yet in our almost two years together, but I'm a reader. And I was especially addicted to reading when I was young. I would read in the morning before going to the bus stop. I would read during breaks at school. I even read walking in the hallway out to the bus. I would read on the bus, and on occasion, I would read walking home. It's a wonder I'm still alive. I had a flashlight under my pillow so that I could read after bedtime if I was really into a book. I'd get so caught up in reading my books, particularly waiting to go to school in the morning, that sometimes my mother would say, Brian, the roof's caving in, just to see if I'd notice. She was trying to jar me out of this reading stupor to bring me back into this world. And I wonder if our gospel text this morning is trying to do something like my mother was trying to do for me when she said, Brian, the ceiling's caving in. That is trying to shake us out of our stupor, bring us into the awareness of now. 
Why? Well, because sometimes we can get so caught up in other things, like I did with my reading, that we ignore what is going on around us. Well, like what, you may ask? Well, some of us can get caught up in the past. We spend so much time remembering how things used to be. This time of year, maybe it's Christmas's past, or people who are no longer with us, or how good things used to be, that we miss what is happening here, now. Some of us have a different problem. We get lost in what is to come. At Halloween, we're thinking about Thanksgiving. At Thanksgiving, it's about Christmas. At Christmas, it's about New Year's. And again, we miss what is right before us. The warning of the text is that we might also miss seeing Jesus. So I wonder if this startling text with its distress among the nations, roaring seas, the powers of heaven shaken, is meant to be so dramatic it wakes us up. It pulls us into the here and now. Pulls us out of the soft glow of a nostalgic past, tears us from the tyranny of what always lies ahead, and places us squarely in the present. And then sets us up to think what I think is the proper mindset for Advent. Advent is probably my favorite season of the church year. And one reason for this is because it displays our uniquely Christian understanding of time and how we live in it. Because in Advent, we wait for the birth of Jesus, the newborn King. And yet... We're living in the reality that Christ was already born 2,000 years ago. We're also waiting for the coming again of the risen and ascended Christ. So we look for and anticipate this coming as much as we do the birth of the child who has already come. So in Advent, we are waiting for the coming of the Jesus who already came and also waiting for him to come again. We live in the already of the kingdom of God that has come near in the Christ child and the not yet of the kingdom that will receive its fulfillment and be perfected when Jesus comes again. But we too can fall into the same kinds of traps that our society does. We can focus so much on the birth of the baby in Bethlehem, the nostalgia of long-remembered Christmas nights, the soft glow that surrounds the story in our minds, the baby asleep in the hay. It's almost like a Thomas Kincaid picture of the nativity. We can get so caught up in that that we never leave that place and move forward into the ministry of Jesus. It's all about the warm fuzzies. Or we can get so caught up in anticipating when Jesus will come again that we look for, talk about, plan for what will be when that happens. That we look beyond this world and live in an imagined world of the future. Advent keeps these two realities in tension. The waiting for what has been and the waiting for what will be and keeps them both in perspective by doing two things. First, it reminds us of what we should do when the world, our lives, when everything goes off the rails. When a divorce we didn't see happens. When wars and conflicts appear on our doorstep. When the earth literally moves as it did in Alaska this week. When fire sweeps over the hill and decimates our town, when the immense power of a hurricane or the focused power of a tornado uproots everything, when the very powers of heaven seem to be shaken apart. Our first impulse is to curl inward, isn't it? To protect ourselves, to deny or hide from what is. But Jesus tells us to do something different. Don't bend down, don't hide. Rather, straighten up. Lift up your heads. It's the echo of Jeremiah to the Israelites, even as their world is crumbling around them. In the midst of troubled times, be confident, for our hope is in God. 
And God's promise is unbreakable and totally trustworthy. God will save us. God will restore us. For God is our righteousness. And from God will come mercy and justice. Time, history has shown us this. That when trouble hits, pick up your head. For your hope is in the Lord. Secondly, Advent reminds us to live life in the here and now, in the present that is already on the way to becoming past and also fading into the future, in the tension between what has been and what will be as we live in the present. We are mindful of what has been Jesus, the visible incarnate word of God, the sign of God's love for us who has walked among us. He has experienced the same joys, sorrows, fears, and trials as our own. Jesus has lived with us, taught us what it means to live in the kingdom, has left us to live that out even as we wait for his coming again, for the completion of that kingdom. And that life lived in the present is one that is alert, watchful, waiting for what is to come. Jesus says we are to be on our guard, to give our full attention to this time, to being alert, ready to notice, to avoid being caught up in the stupor of nostalgia for the past or looking right past the present to the future, to avoid being so caught up in the anxiety of today that we don't notice. Notice what is going on in the here and now. Notice and attend to this moment and to examine it as a sign of the coming of Jesus. A Jesus present here, now, in this person, in this incident, in this place. To paraphrase that old R.E.M. song, Advent helps us mentally stand in the place where we are be fully present in the now, to look carefully around us now and the places we go, the people we need to be attentive to catching sight of Jesus and the approaching kingdom, to see it in the offer of a blanket to someone who is cold. I had a a quilt dropped off this week. It's nice to know Folks actually pay attention to what I put on the Facebook page. But somebody dropped a quilt off this week for me to take to the uh, overflow shelter downtown in Cedar Rapids when it opens. That's a sign of Jesus' presence. To see it in the sharing of a meal with someone who is hungry, a smile that brightens a day, a hug that dispels loneliness, a word that lifts up someone who is beaten down. And this is the part of the mystery of Advent and of how God works. For we know even as we wait and watch for the birth of Jesus, Son of God, even as we wait for the return of our King, we know that Christ is with us now, here, in word and meal, and in the people assembled together around these gifts. My mother tells a story of a time at Lutheridge. Lutheridge was the Lutheran camp in North Carolina, kind of like Iwalu or Lutheran Lakeside. It's up in the mountains of North Carolina. And when I was in high school, the rumor was that if you stood on the road and looked across the little lake to the lighted cross on the far side of the lake, and you looked up into the trees, that you could see the face of Jesus in the shadows from the light in the trees. So I told my mother about this uh, one time. And so the next time she was up with some ladies from the church for a retreat, she shared that with them. And they decided that night they'd go and try and see Jesus. So they go down and she tells the story of being there with these ladies. And everybody is looking across the lake at this. And, you know, they're all kind of saying, oh, yeah, I see it, I see it. And my mother said she kept trying to look harder and harder for it, and she just couldn't see it, couldn't see it. And finally she noticed that 
Well, they'd all kind of wandered off back to the cabin. And it really kind of surprised her. Because she had the distinct sense that someone was standing next to her. Sometimes. We spend so much time looking for Jesus out there. We forget to see Jesus standing right next to us. Advent is a gift. A gift that frees us from the tyranny of time. It reminds us that often being faithful is as simple as being in the present. To wait. To watch. May you be reminded That the Christ who has walked the earth, who will walk it again, walks with you now. Right beside you. At all times. In all places. And this, whether your times are good or filled with distress, this is the good news of Advent. Amen. Um.